Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Saturday now, October 21st, 2023. Got a lot going on out there, certainly with Norma making landfall pretty soon, if it hasn't already, along the Baja. But the main focus of today's update, we will talk about Norma first. Interesting days ahead, potentially here for Tammy. And that's what happens when you get these tropical systems coming out of the deep tropics and interacting with upper level High pressure, low pressure, combination of the two, weird things can happen. So we'll talk about that and uh, much more in today's update. So let's start off here, National Hurricane Center, real quick look. We do have a disturbance in the Southwest Caribbean, not going to amount to anything, so we don't have to worry about that. Then we have Tammy over here from the 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Intermediate Advisory. Eastern Time also the same as Atlantic Standard Time. Pressure 988, the wind's 85 miles per hour. And, uh, yeah, this is a problem for the people down there in the islands. Not terrible, but certainly a, a big nuisance. We will look at this closer as we go forward throughout the update. Meanwhile, we have Norma over here, 12 noon mountain time, 85 mile per hour wind as well. Moving slowly, that's a big problem. We need this to get in and out, but unfortunately it's not. And then we have another disturbance out here, East Pacific Invest Area 91. Might try to develop further. You can see that with the 70 and 80 in terms of its percentage chances there of the next two to five days or seven days respectively. But I'm really not worried about this system doing too much down here over the course of the next few days. The main concern, of course, is Norma over here making landfall soon uh, along the Baja there. More north and west than we were anticipating even a couple of days ago. And therefore, Cabo San Lucas and vicinity taking the brunt of this hurricane today. Miserable weekend for people that have come down there. I've heard from a couple people that traveled to Cabo, and they're like, man, this is quite a bit more than we bargained for. And that just happens. This can still happen. You know, we say that the least amount of skill is with intensity forecasting, but track forecasting, especially later in the season, when things are just different, it's not as straightforward as your normal hurricane season peak window, like mid-August through the end of September. You can get some weird track problems there, too, of course. But once you get to October, it just does become harder because you have different weird things going on. They slow down, these hurricanes do. They have weird track changes because of what's happening in the higher latitudes. And unfortunately, for those that had good big plans for the Baja today, not so good, unfortunately. But again... It'll move out. It's going to get there eventually. And as I say, the sun will come out tomorrow. I mean, look, we've got this mid-latitude storm up here in the um, New England coastal waters. Very nice fall weather elsewhere. But then you got a hurricane here and then a hurricane over here where summertime and the tropical stuff is still going very strong. Looking at Norma first on the interactive map over at the Hurricane Track Insider site. I mean, we were. We were thinking... A couple days ago, this would come up close and go in something like that. But boy, this is going to make landfall right along the Baja there. you got these mountains in here. And, uh, you know, it's not flat all down there. It's not like the Everglades in Florida. And you can see on this relief map here of our base map, that definitely tells the story. So a very miserable time of it. Big waves, uh, strong winds, flooding, all of it. The storm surge at the coast. Yes, that has happened and still happening along the southern Baja, but it'll get better. Norma will move through and eventually make landfall again in a couple of days in Mexico. Close-up satellite animation, visible high res of Norma. I guess the only good news I've got today is at least the deeper convection, the thunderstorm activity, is starting to blow off more, but the damage is done, so to speak. This is already making landfall now. Hurricane right along the southern Baja. It is going to bring all that moisture and uh, wind with it into Mexico up here throughout the next two days, crossing the southern Gulf of California. What about Tammy? Tammy also trying to hold its own as the seventh hurricane of the season. Deep thunderstorm activity. I guess the good news here, most of that deep thunderstorm activity not occurring over the islands right now. But if this tracks on through like we're thinking it could, you don't want one of those areas to bubble up right on top of you. Let me just say that. you got Barbuda, which is right here. This is Antigua right here. And St. Bartolome over here, just to give you some references. And, uh, yeah, you don't want any of that deep convection 
popping over your location. No way to predict that. We don't know. You know, that's just not predictable. In fact, not directly related to Tammy out here, but some shower and thunderstorm activity trying to gather south of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands as well. So just inclement weather, rough conditions in the vicinity of the northeastern Caribbean Sea. Now, what happens with Tammy over the next week or so promises to be very interesting, to say the least. You know, it looked like, kind of like we were looking at with Norma, a pretty straightforward forecast, but we should have learned, what was it, Philippe, that gave us all the weird, uh, or is it Sean? I don't even remember, we've had so many. Forecast errors have been really wacky these last couple of weeks because of the time of year that we're talking about. Again, we don't have straightforward, strong high pressure sitting over the Atlantic, and these things just go along the periphery of that high and then head on out. That is not the case. The trades are weaker. These high pressure areas are fractured or smaller or displaced, and the steering currents are just not as reliable so that everything is just straightforward like we are generally used to seeing. As such, let's drop me out of the frame, look at what the models are starting to do. We started to get a whiff of this yesterday, and now it's starting to smell even more like, you know, going along with that whiff idea, right? That uh, something wacky is going to happen with Tammy down the road. More of the guidance now, sending it off like it's going to go to the northeast, no problem, and then it tries to hook it back. Why is it doing that? I'll explain it. Uh, better as we get into the uh, GFS here. The trough, let's use black, that'll help things pop a little. Let's use blue. So the trough associated with that storm up near New England, these are your lower heights in the atmosphere. There's the edge of the high pressure that was steering it generally in this direction. And normally this would just follow that nice simple path of least resistance out. But watch what happens as I move this through time that trough energy goes away. I said yesterday, it's kind of like Tammy misses the bus. And it's like, hey, wait for me. You see, there it goes. Hey, the bus is leaving. And it does. It leaves it behind. And then high pressure builds back to the north. If I uh, broaden this out, there you go. Huge area of high pressure now all across the Atlantic. Builds in after about the five-day time frame. What does Tammy do? It gets stuck, mills around out there, Looks like it's going to leave again. Now we're way out beyond time, uh, 10 day time frame. But then it still hangs around out there even through two weeks. That is possible. And it's because of the wacky pattern that you get this time of year with these troughs that come in. The troughs lift out. High pressure builds back in. And Tammy doesn't get all the way out. The GFS is not the only model that is indicating these uh, shenanigans, so to speak. Let's look at the euro out to 10 days as well. The euro just leaves it down there, shears it out pretty good, takes that energy, some kind of Central American Caribbean gyre deal, and creates a very large area of unsettled weather in the Caribbean by about 10 days out. Yeah, you can clearly see that. So a wacky, wacky pattern. Going back to this from uh, Levi's site here, Look at the GEFS, the ensemble members. I mean, goodness gracious. Starting to look a little crazy out there as we get towards the end of the month of October. But to me, it's not that surprising because we have seen it before. Sandy, again, 2012 did this. 1991 with Hurricane Grace and the big low pressure up over the Atlantic that became the perfect storm. And there are other examples, I'm sure. Gene in 2004 end of September, another example of a system that was coming up, crossed over, looked like it was going to head out, got trapped because the trough left it behind, and then it made landfall over Florida. Now, we don't think that's going to happen this time, but we don't know for sure. It's just a weird pattern starting to set up. So I painted it pretty benign, I figured, just go with, going to be interesting to track. We'll leave it at that for now. All right, let me get this online for you and share with you what I've been looking at and wish you all a wonderful rest of your Saturday. For those of you in the Baja, Cabo San Lucas specifically, hang in there. It will get better. I know it's been a rough Friday night into Saturday, but if you can just tough it out for the next 12 to 24, and you're there for a few more days, it's going to be fantastic, especially post-hurricane. It always is. One of the nice things that nature generally gives us, sometimes it can be miserable after a hurricane, but in the fall, things usually get a lot better once they move in and out. 
All right, from all of us at Hurricane Track, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.